Today I want to talk to you about Devit, an AI tool that is getting a lot of buzz as this AI software engineer that is supposedly capable of completing real world development tasks completely on its own. I came across it recently, I had heard some people talking about it earlier but I never actually tried it and I was curious about it so in this video I thought I would document to you me giving a shot to Devin to figure out if this AI software engineer is actually any good. So I decided to see how far I could get just by using Devin to build things for me for my startup and honestly the results were very surprising. So in this video I'm going to walk you through what Devin can do and how it works, give you a rundown of all the things that it can do and how to use it as effectively as possible, compare Devin to other AI tools that are out there like Cursor and many of the other similar AI coding tools. And finally, whether I think Devin can be a true replacement for a junior software engineer or if it's just not quite there yet. Before making this video, I reached out to Devin to see if they wanted to partner for this video and they agreed. So I have partnered with Devin to give you this full rundown of Devin. And by the way, if you want to check out this tool, you can get started with it from my link down below in the description. So what is Devin? So the developers of Devin, Cognition AI, I essentially call Devin the AI software engineer that is supposed to go much further than many of the other AI coding tools out there. Namely, what it can do is not just generate some code for you, like on the side of your idea, but actually function as a real world developer. But first of all, having access to all of the tools that you would use as a developer, like not just a coding ID, but a shell, as well as a browser, and it can even make PRs for you in GitHub, as I will show you in a second. And the way you talk to it is essentially supposed to be as if you are talking to a junior developer. And I'm gonna show you now exactly how it works to give you an idea. So when you open up Devin for the first time, you're gonna see something like this. I've got a new account over here, and it's gonna begin by showing you some example tasks that you can give it. So what I'm gonna do here is select a repo. I'm gonna select, for example, this one, my sorting algorithms visualized project, and I'm gonna tell it to begin these three tasks. So now we get into the Devin web app, which has the interface that you're gonna be using to interact with Devin. In the middle, we have a chat window, we can talk to Devin. And then on the left-hand side, you have all the tasks that Devin is working on. This is the first cool thing about Devin. Unlike many other AI coding tools, you can actually multitask with Devin because you can create multiple different sessions and all of these different sessions are working on their own virtual machines. So you can essentially work on multiple things in parallel. And I'll show you later on how you can really use this to speed up your workflow as a developer. So I'm gonna wait a moment for it to complete this and then show you how it actually went through and completed these different tasks. So over here, we can now see that all of these three tasks have been finished. So first of these was to find places where the code can be a bit more efficient. So what it has essentially done first, is just given me some rundown on what it wants to do by essentially giving me a plan of what it is going to do. It's going to create a fishes report, a fishes report .md, and I can even look at the details here. So it's going to create this very detailed overview of how it is going to go through and complete these tasks. And after that, we can see that it worked for two minutes and one second, and it ran some terminal command. It knows how to run through and install everything, essentially get it to work on its machines. And then it's gonna actually create me a PR directly on GitHub because I've connected Devin to my GitHub where he has a PR and he even has this diagram where he's explained exactly what it has done and everything like that. And over here, we have this second task where it has again worked for seven seconds to essentially scan the code base, get access to it, and then work for one minute, 26 seconds to again, run a bunch of commands to essentially complete this task. You can go through this to see exactly what it has done. So right here then it has given me a roast and then on the the last one, I asked it to explain the architecture of the code base to a new engineer. And again, he has done that in a lot of detail over here. The benefit of Devin is because it's essentially indexing the entire code base when you ask it to do something, it can almost instantaneously understand the entire code base, which would take a human potentially hours or even days to do if it is a very big project. All right, so now to show Devin in more action. First, I want to give an idea of the kind of things Devin is usually good at doing. So for example, we have the same project over here, which is my sorting algorithms project, which looks something like this. 
this, where it's essentially just a visualization of a bunch of different sorting algorithms. What I could see here is that there is a bug where when I click on a new array to be generated, it doesn't stop the previous sorting algorithm from running. So now what I might imagine doing is telling Devin to essentially fix this bug so that when I click generate a new array, stop slash reset the currently running sorting algorithm. So now we can see that it is typing. So it's explaining how it's working through this problem. It's gonna look into the animation system to see how to fix the issue. And so here we can see something interesting, which is a feature that I wanted to show you actually, suggested new knowledge. So it seems like whenever Devin is working through these problems, when he encounters something that he thinks might be useful for the future, you can actually save this in Devin's knowledge. So you're gonna open this knowledge suggestions window, where it's giving me this suggestion on when working on interactive applications with animations, particularly sorting visualizers or similar educational tools, when the user clicks a reset or generate new array button, during an active animation sequence, they should expect the current animation to stop immediately. So now what I can do is either edit this if I want to change this in some way, or I can just accept this. So then next time when I'm working on a similar application, Devin actually remembers to use this knowledge that it's building up to essentially automatically fix any similar issues in the future in any project. And this is again, pretty impressive that I haven't seen in many other AI tools. Other AI tools might remember something like this from the same project, but not across many projects because this is saved in your Devin's knowledge, not just in the knowledge of this particular session or something like that. So that's just an interesting feature. So now I can see that it's updated plan and it tells me what it wants to do. And again, I can follow it where it's done. It's even ran the application in here, which is very interesting. So any front end applications, you can actually run and try clicking on things to like test if things work on its own. So here we can see that task completed. I've implemented the animation cancellation fix and updated your existing PR. And we can see the PR over here, which we can view. And it has created this image in here even, which is pretty remarkable. Again, I haven't seen any other AI tool do this. So if you should take a moment to see how Devin is doing all of this, what he has access to is first of all, obviously the code, which you can view over here. And by the way, at any time, if you want to take over from Devin and or just see the changes he has done to the code, you can click right here on code and it opens this IDE window where you can see and review all the code changes that it has done. All that looks good to me. And it also has access to a shell where we can see a lot of the commands that it has run. And if you want to run com commands yourself, you can essentially turn this into a full on ID at any moment if you want to take over from Devin and you can run your own terminals from this terminal window in this code section over here. For example, here we can run this application to first make sure that everything works and we can open this on Devin's integrated browser. We essentially now have a browser running on Devin's virtual machine where we can test everything. And it seems everything is working here. So I'm happy with this and I'm just gonna go to the PR and it looks like it's actually already merged. So that is very fantastic. So now to give you an idea of how you might imagine working with Devin and the real power of Devin, at least for me, what I have here is a task list of some to-do tasks that I might imagine working, for example, on today. And what I've done here is I have written a prompt for all of these that I want to give to Devin. And how I might imagine starting my day as a developer, now a senior developer, essentially managing Devin, is that I'm just gonna open up three different sessions inside of Devin and give these prompts to it just like that, we're gonna copy paste the first one over there, paste the next one, and then the third one on a third session. And now what I can essentially do is just leave Devin to work on all three of these tasks and just go do something else while I wait for Devin to work on these tasks. And then later when I'm out and about, I'm gonna get emails from GitHub notifying me that Devin has made some PR requests that are ready for me to review. So we can see here that we now have emails telling me that Devin has completed his work. So we're gonna see what happens. So for this first one, he has created me a plan on what it is going to do. He has worked, it looks like for one minute, 26 seconds. He has encountered some issues of like missing publishables key because I didn't actually install all the environment variables and everything. So I can't fully test it by actually running it on the browser, but that is fine because he has still actually managed after 14 seconds 
to create these changes. So what I can do now is either open the repo and review it that way or click on the code window over here to see the code changes that it has made. And just on first glance, all of this actually looks very good to me. This is exactly how I would have done this myself. It's just created a bit of extra code here as well as changed the styling. So that looks good to me. Now looking at the second one, again, the same thing. It has created me a plan. And over here, we can see all the changes that have happened. And again, at least on first glance, all of that looks good to me. And the third one as well, again, here is a PR that we can review and everything like that. And we can even see when I go to my Versal where my application is deployed, that it has created deployment for all of these different tasks that I can choose to promote into production, which is kind of very cool and not something that most AI tools can do. They might be able to generate the code, but they essentially have to work on these tasks consecutively. And I constantly have to go and manually apply the code and then tell it to do the next thing and apply the code. Whereas with Devin, I can just leave it to work on these things, come back, review the changes, and then perhaps tell it to continue on the task if it is not completed yet and essentially work that way, which allows me to work on multiple parts of my project at the same time rather than sequentially, which is gonna massively boost my productivity. So that is essentially how I think is the best way to work with Devin. Essentially, you treat it as if it is a junior developer. You speak to it as if it is a junior developer, you let it do its thing, and then you come back, you review the work, you give it some comments, you let it continue, etc., etc. Some other cool things about Devin that I found very useful is, first of all, the fact that you can use Devin also on your mobile. So right here, I've opened Devin on my mobile device, and I can see all of these chats right here, because this is not saved locally, it is saved inside of the cloud on my Devin account. So what I can do is, let's say I'm out on bow, let's say I'm at the gym and I get an email, that, okay, there's a PR ready for you for review. I can now continue from my mobile device to give further instructions to Devin, essentially to allow it to continue working without me having to be on my computer. I can be at the airport, for example, like I was yesterday, and I can still keep working on my projects by just talking to Devin directly from my mobile device. Now, some of the other things you can do first, what you can do is click here on Ask Devin, which will open up this window, which essentially allows you to ask questions where you can essentially get answers much more quickly from the repositories that Devin has essentially already understood and already indexed before. For this to work the best, what you should do is go over here here to set up your repository, which is essentially gonna save an image to Devin's virtual machine with the entire code base fully indexed and fully installed, which will essentially allow you to ask questions and complete tasks on that repository much more quickly. So right here, I'm doing it for my sorting algorithm repository. And don't worry, there's full instructions on how to do this when you get to this section in Devin. And what I can do now is, for example, ask Devin to explain the project and the algorithms used. And because this repository is now set up in Devin is going to give me these answers extremely quickly. We can see here it is scanning the entire project. And it's giving me a very detailed breakdown of how this project works. So let's say you need to give a description of this somewhere or to write it in your docs or something. You can just get Devin to do that right here. And you can even click here to go deeper, which is going to use this deep thinkability to give you even deeper explanations and answers on your code, which is going to be especially useful when you work with very big code bases. The other thing we have here is Devin Wiki where what he essentially does is he creates full documentation and essentially like a knowledge base based on your projects automatically. So if you as a developer have ever had to create docs for your projects or to create some kind of wikis or instructions, you don't have to do that anymore because Devin has essentially just done this in the background as it goes through and understand this code base. It has full descriptions of the project. It even has these diagrams on how it works technically, how the architecture is structured. So basically like a full wiki on your projects created automatically by AI, which is again, very impressive. And I have not seen this with any other AI tools. The other cool thing about Devin is that you can actually integrate Devin into Slack. So especially if you're working on Teams, you can just essentially have Devin added as a member to your Slack team or Slack organization. And anytime you want to tell Devin to do something, just like you would tag a junior developer on Slack, you can just tag Devin. And Devin is then gonna go and spin out a virtual machine instance and go and complete that task without you even having to open the Devin web app interface. So before I give my conclusion on what I think about Devin, I wanted to also briefly cover how to get the most out of Devin. Again, ideally you wanna think about Devin as if it is a human junior engineer and you wanna give it instructions as if you were giving instructions 
to a human, meaning you want to be as detailed as possible when you give it prompts. As with any AI tools, it's garbage in, garbage out. If you give it bad instructions that are not clear, the quality of its output is not going to be very good. You want to describe to it exactly what you want, exactly which files it should access if necessary, although that's not always necessary. You want to describe exactly the outputs you want, basically as much detail as possible. And again, the biggest benefit of Devin is when you let it work on multiple tasks in parallel. That is really what sets Devin apart, at least in my opinion, from many other AI tools. So in that sense, Devin is almost like a team of developer rather than a developer. And the type of development work that Devin does best at, at least in my experience here, is any kind of automation, testing like simple features that again you might imagine giving to like an intern level developer in real life now what about the limitations of devin where does it not really work well well you want to remember that as with any ai tool the larger the code base the more complex the instructions the more risk that there is that the ai is going to hallucinate and i find that if you give it a very large scale task where it needs to edit multiple components it needs to add multiple endpoints it needs to connect them the more essentially steps there are in one prompt or like one task, the more risk there is that something goes wrong. So it's often better that you give these tasks like one by one. So you start a session for like one feature, you give it one task like I did there to essentially tell it to do something in the front end. And now there's also a back end component involved, but I first told it to only do the front end part. And once it's completed that, and I've verified that it's done it correctly, then I give it more instructions like I did before. So when you work like that, on these like smaller chunks, I find that you get much better success from Devin and AI tools in general. And obviously AI hallucination is always going to be a risk, just like with any AI tool, you cannot fully rely on it. You as the human still need to understand the code. You can't fully let this just autonomously build your startup for you or something like that. It can just help you do a lot of the repetitive things for you and do it much more quickly than you would do as a human, allowing you to focus on the higher level tasks. And that still requires you to understand the code, to fully go through and review all the changes that it does and not just blindly merge all the pull requests that it gives you. The other part where I find Devin and other AI tools are weaker is any visual UI stuff. And this is unfortunate for me because I'm also terrible at UI, but that also makes sense because AI doesn't have eyes, like they can't see, they can't make visual decisions that well about like what looks good and things like that. I can make good guesses, but often you will still have to come in as the human and do the UI and really make things look visually good. Mobile development also isn't as strong with an AI tool because while it has a browser to test web application, it doesn't at least yet have a mobile interface to test mobile applications. So again, there's going to be more limitations on that as well as also obviously security. This has been a big thing online with a lot of vibe coders. They will make apps with AI, but the AI isn't always as good with security. So all these AI applications might end up having security holes. So again, you as the developer, the senior developer will still need to have the knowledge and the understanding on how to make your apps secure. So in conclusion, do I think Devin can truly replace a human engineer? No, absolutely not. But it can make you like 10x more effective as a human developer. This is really what Devin is for. Like I've said throughout this video, you can and should treat it like a human engineer, but it is still not a human engineer. You still need to keep an eye on it because of the hallucination. You can't give it like very, very large scale tasks at once. It's not gonna be as reliable as a real human. And because it's an AI, it's always gonna be more prone to make the same kinds of mistakes over and over again. The kind of hallucination, like getting stuck in loops and things like that. So Devin absolutely doesn't replace engineers, but I think it is a revolutionary way for you to utilize AI in your development. So I would highly recommend you try it out. I think it's especially suited for startup founders where you're working on like a medium sized project where you might not need to quite hire human engineers, but it's big enough where one of those other more simpler AI tools is not that suitable, where you have like multiple different features that you might be wanting to work on at the same time. You can really utilize Devin well for that. And also engineering teams. Again, you can just add it on Slack, give any tasks to it that you think the AI can do well, and you'll learn as you use it what type of tasks are really good for AI and what types of tasks are more good for humans. And in general, I think it's a really big step forward in how we developers use AI, not replacing us as developers, but how we use it to supercharge our productivity. So go check out Devin from the first link down below in the description and let me know in the comments what you think about it. And with that, I will see you in the next video.